this video I'm going to make for you if you're suffering from onycholesis with hyperkeratosis. That might be something you see when you're suffering from a product allergy, when you've become allergic to an artificial nail product and the nail plate detaches from the nail bed and a sort of keratinization happens of the lower layer of the nail plates called hyperkeratosis. And we want to show you today how to take care of that because we need to break down the hyperkeratosis to solve the problem. And that's a pretty tricky thing to do. We're going to show you how to do it at home. Again, I'm using the gorgeous bowl because, um, because I can and because it's a video. But if you're at home and you only have a Pyrex dish or perhaps a, an aluminium a bowl, whatever, Perhaps you mix cakes in it, you like baking cakes, use that. Um, it doesn't matter as long as you've got a container uh, to put the solution in. The first thing we have to do, as always, is wash our hands with soap and water. I'm going to use Socoleptus today. If you have hard fell um, body gel, that's also a really good product. Um, it's definitely a neutral product. Um, and... I like Socalyptus because it has added alatuan and ureum and we're going to be dealing with nail units that have a problem. So the first thing we do is wash our hands with soap and water. I'm going to add a little bit of water to the Socalyptus that I already put on my fingers because that creates the bubbles in Socalyptus. It has no added salt, uh, soap, no added salt. I'm baking, obviously. Um, so first we wash our hands with soap and water and rinse them well. The importance of soap and water and washing our hands is that soap and water uh, will take care of something like 94, 96% of pathogens that could possibly be on our nail plates. And we want to reduce the chance of infections while our nail plates are detached from our nail beds. We want to make the chance of that happening as small as possible. So you're going to need to wash your hands four, five times a day when we're doing this. I'm going to throw this water away now because I want to make a solution to rinse my hands in. And I'm not at the sink, so I'm going to put that into a bucket and put my ball back on my mat. Then I'm going to add one teaspoon of IO Drench. I already have it measured out in a little container here. I'm going to put that into my container. Contains aluminium, alatuan and ureum, and it's been brought back to powder form. When we add water to this, um, it reduces the pH as well slightly of water. But what we've actually done is turn ureum and alatuan into a solvent. Now, solvents go through our nail plates really quickly. And that's really important with the problem that we're having now. So we're going to rinse our hands and we don't put our hands. We don't submerge our hands like that. You're going to rinse your hands in this water solution. Making sure your thumbs also rinse because it's solvent it's going to go straight through the nail plate underneath the free edge of the nail between the nail plate and the nail bed, and it will start doing its work already when we've done that we're going to dry our hands and so we're going to use something that is truly amazing when we have a buildup of hyperkeratosis between the nail plate and the nail bed that it's like the lower layer of the nail plate, the skin starts to keratinize and it gets thick. Um, we'll show some, we'll put some pictures in here so you can have a look and see what we mean. We're going to use Cuticol, developed by Jim Nordstrom and Doug Shun. Cuticol has the capability to break down the walls of ills, of calluses, and also of hyperkeratosis. With the added advantage, we don't have to stop it working. 
it's when we've sprayed it and used it, we don't need to, it, it, there isn't like a, an acid chemical reaction. Um, it will take care of the skin and it will start to break the wall of the heap keratosis down. And what we do is simply spray it between the free edge and the nail plate. Cuticle will only work where it needs to work. Okay? So we don't have to worry about burns or nasty things happening to our skin if we've used cuticle, but already it's starting to attack the wall of the callus or of the hip keratosis between the nail plate and the nail bed. We can even just rub it in, massage it in to our hands. It doesn't work where it can't work. Now, something else we have to do, and I didn't bring two bowls with me, so that's quite inconvenient. I'm going to move this bowl to the sides and I'm going to show you something else that we have to do. We don't want a bacterial infection to take place while we're dealing with the heap keratosis. So in the same way that we might use uh, water and vinegar when we're dealing with uh, bacterial infection. We're going to do that today too. I have 200 mils of normal white kitchen vinegar and I'm going to add 200 mils of water. We got this one. Yeah, I'm sorry, Albert Heim, but we got this one from the Jumbo just because the Jumbo was the closest supermarket to us. White natural vinegar. White natural vinegar is not going to attack a bacteria, but it will change the, the surroundings so that a bacteria doesn't enjoy developing there. So we're just going to, I used to use my Pyrex, my Pyrex dish from home, and I'm just going to make sure that all the nails are slightly soaked in that solution and I can keep this for the rest of the day too. So I'm going to move, dry my hands now. So this is exactly the way you would do with it at home. You have one solution with half vinegar, half water, not malt vinegar. If you're English, please don't use the Saracens. Keep that for your fish and chips. And so we're going to have one bowl that contains the RO drench and the water. So vinegar doesn't smell very pleasant on your fingers. At least I don't like the smell of it on my fingers. So I'm going to rinse my hands in my RO drench solution. And then I'll just dry them. In the same way, um, we don't, we've used the vinegar to change the, the, the living environments. So we don't get a bacterial infection. We're going to use Heka and we're going to drip that bit up behind the free edge just as a preventive measure. We don't want Pseudomonas to take hold. So I'm just going to drip that behind the free edge of the nail plates. I'm going to let that sink in just a little bit the same way that I will do with the oil. And then I'm just going to shake it free and it'll dry up by itself. It also contains 70% alcohol, so that will just evaporate. When I've done that, I'm going to choose an oil. If I have normal award-winning, multi-award-winning daddy oil, CBD daddy oil, if I need a slightly more intensive oil and CBD elixir, which is the powerhouse that we can be slightly more lazy with. Um, Today, for this video, I'll use the normal CBD oil and you just drip that behind a drop behind every free edge of the nail plate. Keep your hands up like this. While that's happening, the oil's traveling down the proximal nail folds. We've taken care of the hyponychium. It's gone between the nail plate and the nail bed. And then we can just rub it in and we will finish with lotion goals again out of the relief line again developed by Jim and Doug 
and a very small amount, you need no more than this. Give that lid a little tap to close it. This is made of sugar. This is biodegradable. It's, it's made of sugar cane, I think it is in English. Um, and it's biodegradable. It's not plastic, so you're going to love that. And just a little bit, no more than this. You don't want oily, greasy hands. Just rub it in. And this is what we're going to do. And we're going to repeat that four or five times a day um, to help our nail plates reattach to the nail beds. So I hope that was easy for you. Thanks for watching.